Harry, would you give us your name, your date of birth, and uh, where you were born? Harrison Anderson Cornelius. And I was born in De Pere, West De Pere, out in the country, in a log house. No plumbing. <laughs> right, could you spell uh, your full name for us? It's A R R I S O N. Anderson, A N D E R S O N. Cornelius, C O R N E L I U S. Now, give us the name of your parents and your mother's maiden name. My father's name was Anderson W. I don't know what the W stands for. And my mother was Lillian. Do you remember her maiden name? Huila. Can you spell Huila, please? No. At least she's honest. Alright, do you uh, do you remember your your grandparents at all? A little bit, vaguely. I my I never I uh, my grandmother died when I was very young, but I remember seeing her a couple times before she died. I must have been about four or five, something like that. I don't remember her. Could you give us their names? <coughs> the Mason that was the grandpa. I don't know what the grandma's name was. Grandma. <laughs> was that on your father's side or your mother's side? That was on my mother's side. But she was, my mother was adopted. Now, um, where did your... Uh, where did your parents reside? In uh, when I had all, the, all their lives on a farm. My my mother was on a, on a the last I know of her was on off the ridge road there on uh, behind Garrison's Tavern. Now I don't know what the name of the road is. And my father was out on the. Uh, it's off from Highway E2 towards Freedom War. Now it's called Johnson Road. I don't know if it had a name for that when he was born. But I mean, they call it Johnson Road now off from Chip Road. Now, how, how large of a uh, property or, or place did uh, your parents have when you, know, when you were born? Do you remember? No, I don't remember. Did they because, tell you? No, they never told us. Oh. But it was just a little log cabin I know we lived in at the end of Highway H where it bends, makes the bend towards freedom, going towards freedom. Tell me a little something about your father. Uh, what do you remember about him? Like his, uh, uh, what kind of occupation was he involved in? He was a stonemason once a while. And, uh, and towards, at the end he worked for Larson company, canning company, but he did a lot of work for the mason, he was a mason, I know, I know that. But tell me, tell me what a, a stone mason would do, is that, is that uh, like laying bricks or is that the... Making the stone walls in parks and stuff. Well, big, yeah. big, uh, big stones. Uh, yeah, oh. yeah, quarry stone, he was using quarry stone and making walls for, on, on parks and stuff. Do you know where he where he picked that that uh, trade up from? No, I don't remember. I don't remember. Did uh, he ever talk about uh, uh, any projects that he worked on? No, I don't remember where he where he. I don't remember where he worked. He never just he just went to work. Did he ever uh, talk to you about uh, or do you hear? Uh, mentioning where he went to school? He went to Carlisle. He went with uh, Jim Thorpe. He mentioned that to the same school that Jim Thorpe was in. Did he uh, participate or uh, in any sports or anything there that you know of? He never said that. Never talked about it. He just mentioned that he was with Thorpe. That's all. He didn't say what kind of uh, studies or school that he... No. He had there. Do you know how many years he went there? No. Okay. Uh, what about your mother's education? Did she ever talk about it? No. This says she went to school up by. There was an old schoolhouse on the 
kind of someplace along the Methodist Church. I don't know just where. But there was a school that she went to there. Now, uh, did your parents speak Oneida? Not to us, but they, they understood it well. That's the only thing they could talk when they were younger, I guess. But they had a hard time. My dad and mother both had a hard time, so they didn't, he wanted to make sure we didn't know Oneida. So they never would never speak to us in Oneida. They always used English. But I learned it from my, by listening to my grandma. And that's right. So I did know my grandma a little bit then. When she came to visit my mother, because she could not speak any English. And so I, that's how I learned it, just by listening. What, did you, did you know what they called your grandmother? Besides, uh, no. Grandma? Did they have an Indian name for her? Not that I know of, no. Two minutes, Gordon. Okay. Um, they, uh, your, your mother, uh, did she, uh, did she work at home all the time or did she work out? No, she was at home all the time. Okay. She didn't have any time, she had too many kids. Right. <laughs> Tell me how many brothers and sisters that she had. Just I, start with the oldest one. There, well, the oldest one was, there was Ella May, and then and then Delora, then uh, m me, then Lincoln, then Franklin, then Leonard. Clark, I forgot where Eleanor fits in there, and Josie was the youngest one. Benny and Josie were the two youngest. So that was a houseful. Yes. <laughs> did you uh, did you have a big garden? We had all garden. <laughs> we always had about ten acres, and we, the house took out probably about an acre that wasn't made into a garden. Something was planted in the whole thing. We kept busy all summer long hoeing. <laughs> did you have any livestock? We always had that. Uh, Chickens, as long as I can remember, we always bought 500 in the spring, and I kept some, and I kept some for the winter for eating and laying eggs. Then we generally bought two pigs. They kept them during the summer. They would get them in the spring and keep them till fall, and they butcher one, then one later. Are you telling me that the, you'd get about 500 chickens? Yeah, 500 chickens in the spring. In the spring, and we'd raise those and. Quite a few of them would die out though, and we use those for cash, cash money in, in the fall, and uh, save some for winter for eating. We eat so many during, yeah, on weekends, and then laying eggs, we save some. The rest went to the butcher. <laughs> and you also mentioned you had um, you'd, you'd raise pigs too. Yeah, two two pigs we raise every. Every spring we'd buy those too. Did you have any um, any cows or horses? No horses. No horses. Have a couple cows? No. No. Oh? No. No cows either. No barns to put them in. <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay. What was your What was your job at home? Um, in terms of uh, you know chores or responsibilities around the house. Not really, nothing particular. Not, not, not nothing particular in particular at all. But we just did a lot of hoeing crops all, all summer long. We had to hoe so many rows before you can go out and play. <laughs> and and what was the primary uh, crop that you raised at home? Well, we raised uh, everything for the winter. We raised potatoes and corn, beets, carrots, turnips, pumpkin. <laughs> And then we we saw uh, that was mostly our stuff we had for the winter, and we raised, and then we raised raised a lot of green beans for for the companies, Larson Company and Seymour Canning Company, and we'd pick those for selling cash to for we raised for in the fall. Now um, you, you mentioned before that. Uh, was there water and lights at home? Water and what? And electricity. No electricity. But there was water. We had to, we had, in our second house, the first house, we had to carry water from our neighbor in the log house. But then we moved to the second house, we had a, a well. 
hand dug well. It was dug by hand. I think it was 28 feet deep. My my dad dug it. They, they put tiles down. He had one guy helping him with a bucket at a time, 10 quart pail, pulling up the dirt. 28 feet down. I think they went about six feet around and went straight down till they hit water. And they put the big round stones in the bottom. And they put the ceramic tile, about I don't know, about 80 inches, something like that, coming up to the top and fill it with dirt. That, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. There are a lot of pails coming out of a 28-foot hole. <laughs> what kind of uh, fuel did you use? Coal. We used coal. We'd, we'd go to, whenever the storm was coming up, my dad would take the back seat out of the car. We had an old 30 Chevy and get some burlap sacks and we'd go down and get the chunks of coal from the coal company. Big chunks then. We'd bring it up, put it in bags and bring it home in the back of the car. And he'd break it up with a hammer and put it in a thing. In a, we had a pot belly stove that I remember. <laughs> and we, every, mor every night he'd, every morning he'd clean it the ashes out, pull all the ashes out, start right from fresh again. He'd start with a couple, but uh, three corn cobs he had in, he'd soak in kerosene overnight. In the morning he put those, shake all the ashes out, put those corn cobs down, then put the coal on top and touch it off with a match and we'd have heat in no time, be red hot. And it was so, there was no insulation in the house. It was cool in those days. You could see the frost on nails, on the roofing nails coming through the roof. Um, did uh, he had a, a, a vehicle then uh, to get around in? Yeah. And where would uh, where do you remember that your folks uh, would be doing their shopping? Lee Brothers in De Pere. They'd go to De Pere to do yeah. a lot of those. Yeah, they did a little bit in, in Freedom, but not much. And then Vandenberg's too. Once in a while, we'd go to Vandenberg's for odds and ends. Van's grocery store they had. And tavern connected. Was your father involved in any, um, uh, you know, like baseball teams or uh, tribal government or? No. Uh, um, did he have, have any sports that he, he, uh, he not, not that I know. He never talked about any. Baseball or? No, nothing. And uh, what about your mother? Was she involved in anything like at the church? Uh, no, because we didn't, most of all, didn't want to go any place with the car, saving on gas. <laughs> well, that was right before the Depression, too, wasn't it, or right during it? Well, I, I don't remember too much before the Depression. I remember at that time, we had a Model T, I think, I think, with wooden coils in it. For, it didn't, I, I, don't, I don't remember any, any windows on it, just a canvas roof at that time, but I, that's all I remember about that. But then and later on I remember that we had that 30 Chevy, and we had that for years and years, that had a regular size on it though. Was that before or was that after what they called the New Deal? Uh, or do you remember anything about the New Deal at all? I just remember my dad working, I think, he, I think he started working with the New Deal uh, uh, here, I don't know. I, I really don't remember too much in those days. I don't, didn't pay too much attention to that. But I know it was mentioned quite a bit. Uh, okay. what, what church did they attend? Methodist. Methodist. Oneida Methodist. And I am still there. <laughs> Tell me what a, what a Sunday would be like at home. Like any other day. We went to church only half, about half of it. Not even half of the time. Not, not very often because we didn't even want to use the car too much in the early days. Then later on, after we was working, then we went to church once in a while, you know, more often then. But that model, that model, that model T, I remember that thing is, didn't run too often. <laughs> what about the, uh, what about holidays? Did you celebrate any holidays? Christmas, I remember. Christmas is one. Tell me what a typical Christmas would be. I don't remember that right like that far. Did, did I just, you have a tree? Yeah. The only what Christmas I remember when I was living in the log house, it, I got a car with, with lights on it. It had a battery-powered middle of flashlights where the headlights should be. 
and I put it on the string and took it outside. The first thing I was dragging it all through the snow. <laughs> Good job. That's, that's a highlight in my life, getting a car with lights on it. <laughs> what about uh, Lake Hoi An? Did you celebrate Hoi An? Yeah. We used to go around in the neighborhood the first of the year. A bunch of kids, and they ho holler Hoi An, we'd get donuts. But I don't know what Hoi An means. <laughs> but anyway, that's a, that was a custom we did. Every, quite a few of the families did that. They, they call it, they're going hoi -aning. And some of the older people still remember about it yet. <laughs> but they don't do it anymore. Do you do it anymore? Yeah. Sure. But I don't get nothing. <laughs> 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 what, about, uh, what about Easter or Fourth of July? What was that like? Was there any special things going on at that time? I don't remember that. Uh -huh. I don't remember nothing. Mm -hmm. I used to remember firecrackers. My aunt used to bring firecrackers over once in a while. But the 4th of July, I remember that. We'd set those off. My aunt and uncle, Vic, <coughs> they'd bring a big string of firecrackers. And I threw one up in the air one day. And my aunt Mary gave me a bunch of firecrackers. And I threw it up in the air. And it came back. And the wind blew it right back at her. <laughs> Boy, you ought to see her run. <laughs> When somebody gets sick at home, what uh, what kind of uh, uh, what would you what would you do? I mean, uh, there was no doctor available, or you didn't run to the to, to the hospital. Uh, do you have home remedies that you took care of? Or? We had uh, a bunch of stuff that my mother used to pick in the fall, different herbs and stuff. I don't know what they were really. She used to get stuff. They call it. Some kind of root hononoli. We used to. I remember that's one thing we used to get all the time. And some yellow stuff, flowers we pick in the fall. I don't. I don't know what they were. And uh, she did a couple things, but I don't. I don't know what it was. I. I never paid attention to it too much. It was too much of a chore. It was. Just work. You didn't play when you was doing that. <laughs> Did your parents ever talk about the New York plane? No. Did you ever hear any stories about the 52 cents that they received? Yes, I used to get that. I remember that. Everybody got it towards the end then. Before they... And it's, we didn't get it for many years. Then we finally got some kind of settlement. Uh, I don't know, about 20 years ago? Something like that. Do you know... Do you happen to know what that was for? Why Why did you get the 52 cents? I think they said something about the government was supposed to pay them so much a year. And they were getting, that was a portion that they were getting of it. When it broke down, it amounted to 52 cents, I remember that. <laughs> now, where did you, uh, where did you start school? At uh, Seventh-day Advent School in the middle east of my house. On, on, on highway, highway J and, and, and Ridge Road there, double E. And uh, how many kids went there? No, I don't know. I never counted. Quite a few. Mostly Unitas or, or um, a mixture? It was uh, all Unitas when I started. When I started school, I, uh, it was just one room, one room schoolhouse. And all the grades, one grade sat on, on rows on, of benches. They sat, they had a little desk and they sat on one side. They had three, I think, I don't even remember if it was three or four rows. But you have the higher grade, big, higher graders on one side, the lower grades on the other side. And they would go from uh, first to eighth grade? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, just one teacher. No. Yeah, that was a seven-day Advent school? Yeah, we studied Bible school the first, Bible, the Bible the first hour. So that's how I got to learn about the Bible quite a bit. Was there also a seven-day Advent church? That was their church, I, I imagine. Oh, it was the church and think, school combined? Yeah, huh? yeah. Oh, 
And where was that located? Right near your place? About, about two and a half miles something like that from where we were. We used to walk it all the time. And how long did you go there? For the first uh, four or four. I don't even remember the first four, four grades, I think. Something like that. I went to Elm Hill School, they called it, after that. Was that a larger school? Yeah, then that was a mixed, and that was integrated school. And we had the pale faces with us. <laughs> Who's your, do you remember your teacher there? Uh, let's see now. He's Mr. Burns, I was there when I just started. <coughs> but I don't know, I can't remember. I think that was, he was there all the while I was there. I think. I was only there for the last three grades, I think. So. Do you remember some of your uh, the ones that were in the same class you were in? Not too many. Not too many. A few of them, I remember a few of them. Now, when you were up through those years, it, uh, would, would you work out in the summertime or did you uh, just work solely at home? We worked at home when we were younger, too. We were teenagers, and we worked for different, different farmers in the area. And what kind of work was that? All kinds of stuff. Hauling manure, plowing the fields, all kinds of stuff. And in the fall, we did the harvesting next. Pitching grain, pitching peas, <coughs> pitching corn, and hauled up to the silo. And they had silo fillers and we put it on a conveyor belt like and we go up and chop it up and it shoved it into the silo then. Did you ever run uh, and you'd go out picking uh, contract beans and for other people? Yeah, in the summer in the summertime I don't for cards fall when they get ripe. I'm not ripe but ready to pick. And then uh, there used to be a place out in Black Creek that uh, they used to work on horse riders. Did you ever work out that way? No. no. I never had time for that. What about up at Surgeon Bay uh, picking cherries? I never went there either. No. Never had time. Too busy working at the house. What kind of uh, uh, activities would you have when you played? Baseball. That's about it. Where where was those those games held at? Yeah, at uh, my, by my neighbor's about a quarter mile away, by Bunny Johnson. We played in his field most of the while, and my uncle Joe. Well, they were both right next, not, not far away. Played in the horse pasture, cow pasture. Was there or any kind of organized uh, ball playing going on at the time? I don't think so. I don't know of any. Like at Gearsalt or Vans Valley? Or there was, yeah, there over there, but I mean not, not, no, not for kids. These were for. I thought, I thought they were older people. Older people. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how they old they were, but they were older people. <laughs> well, okay, when you finished, uh, you see, you went to Allen Hill? Yeah. And uh, when did you finish at Allen Hill? Many, many years ago. All right, I finished after the eighth grade. <laughs> and then where did you, what did you do? I went to... Went to this, uh, Green Bay, Washington Junior. What is it? Why would they send you all the way to Washington Junior on the east side of Green Bay? Do you know? Have you any idea? No idea. It seems like a long way to go to school. It was. Didn't? I thought it was at that time too. The roads weren't that good. They were gravel even, and they didn't. We used to get more snow than now. <laughs> I remember the snow drifts and everything. Sometimes the buses couldn't get through. It just seemed like a long way to, like you'd go to Deep Pier or, was there a high school at Freedom then? Yeah, there yeah, was. Huh? Yeah, there was. Yeah. I don't know why they sent us to Green Bay. Yeah. And, uh, were you involved in any of the things at school in in, uh, in Green Bay? I wasn't 
on a football team. I was too small to play on a basketball. <laughs> too short. <laughs> how was the how was the football team? Did you enjoy that? No. Oh. They had too many big guys. <laughs> I was only 98 pounds, and when I when we went through scrimmage, I play I knew they always they always lined me up against Dick Cooner. He weighed 245 pounds. <laughs> But he couldn't stop me though. He didn't know which side I was going to go outside around him. So he couldn't stop me anyway. <laughs> you remember his name for yeah, sure. Yeah, huh? I'll never forget his name. <laughs> Dick Cunard. <coughs> oh, how far did you, did you finish there? Or did, no. What no. did you do there? No. I just went one year. One I started year? that one year only. I didn't go anymore. Well, let me tell what you do. I had to go to work. Where'd you go to work? At the house, you know, working in the fields, working up the fields and in the fall, getting it ready. And then, then I worked for different farmers during the, the summertime, like I did before. I always did that, and just bummed around mostly. Was there uh, any activities that you got involved with, or uh, you know, your social life or anything? Uh there wasn't, were you about 16, 17 then? There wasn't anything at that time. Nothing. There was nothing going on. Nothing, no organized sports any place. In those days, I was... Now, nowadays, they got a lot of them all over. What about the dances? Did they have any dances that you'd, uh, att you'd attend? No. Didn't they used to have a dance hall by Vanderbilt? By Vanderbilt, yeah. They had a dance hall there, yeah. Uh, and there used to be one by uh, Skyler's, too. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I went there later on when I... But I wasn't, I wasn't going to school anymore when I was going to, I wanted to go to the dance halls and I didn't go to, I wasn't going to school anymore. But when I was going to school, I, there was nothing to do. Nothing to do but work. Mm -hmm. How long, uh, how long did you uh, work before you, uh, you, you joined the service then, didn't you? Yeah, I was in service, yeah, for a while. How, how old were you when you joined? I didn't join, they drafted me. <laughs> what, what year was that? That was 51. 51? Yeah. Okay, and where were you working before you went into the, uh, uh, you were drafted? I was working in Appleton. Oh, oh okay. Well, yeah, I was driving truck. I was a truck driver delivering lumber. And so I was, I worked, I worked there for about, I think about, Ten years all total, but I mean, I took time out for a service while I was there too. Tell me about uh, you were drafted. What happened when you when you got drafted? Tell me where, what what did they do with you? They said greetings. They sent me a letter. They said greetings. <laughs> and then they, they sent me to they sent me to Milwaukee for a physical checkup. And then they sent me back home. And I. I volunteered, I volunteered to go to airborne, so I went airborne then. And that, that was about it. Where did you go to training for that? Fort Campbell. And then Fort Benning, Georgia. I was in two places, Fort Benning, Fort Campbell. Then we took the airborne basic in Fort Benning, Georgia. Then we got back, came back to Fort Campbell again. That was our home base. And we was out to California for just for a maneuver so and then they went to New York one time for maneuvers, winter maneuvers, some new equipment they were trying out. Well, would Syracuse, you go, Syracuse, New York we was in. When you go to um, you know, the airport, do you have to make so many jumps or is, uh, how how does that work? You gotta well, you gotta make so many jumps to qualify, then after that you just uh, once every three months. How how many jumps does it take to qualify? Three, I think it's three. Three jumps you got to qualify. To qualify. And, and then after you got every third month. Now, you see <coughs> these, you know these, uh, uh, all these pictures on that and coming out of there. Uh, does that automatically open up when when you uh, jump out of there? Yeah, on a static on a static line jump, right? You hook up on a cable inside the plane and it runs along the length of the cable. And when you jump out, 
it pulls your chute open. Now, does it? Does everybody carry two chutes or, or just one? No, everybody carries two. Two. A main one on your back and a reserve in the front on your chest. That's smaller. You got a twenty-eight footer, a twenty-eight footer on your back, and you got a twenty-four footer on your front on your chest. Did you ever have to pull the uh, the second one? No. But I come down pretty close to the ground a couple of times. At one time, anyway. What do you mean? You mean uh, but before it opened? Yeah. Explain to me. I, I don't understand. Oh, you got to count 3,000 before. And you're supposed to pull your reserve if you don't open. And I counted 3,000. I counted 6,000. <laughs> then I was, uh, I just, I just, actually, you're supposed to be 10 stuff. And I just relaxed and it opened up like this. The main one opened up. But I was on the ground and I hit, I was only about three top level. Before it opened up? Yeah. Boy, you must have come down with an impact then, huh? I, no, you don't come, when it's, it stops you, you just stop dead when it, when it flops open, it snaps you. And you stop almost dead, then you go down again, you know. So, as long as, as long as you don't hit the ground before it opens, you're all right. I just, <laughs> wow, that, that, that's got to be an experience in itself, though. Yeah. yeah. So you never had to open up the second chute, though? No, I yeah, never did. I wish I should have at that one time, but I didn't. <laughs> okay, uh, you're telling me that uh, you went into training and, and uh, you finished your and you qualified. Then where did you go? Back to Fort Campbell. Back to Fort Campbell. <laughs> yeah. And what do you what? As as a uh, paratrooper, you just keep training for, uh, you know, to it's, keep. It's more or less like a regular army after that. But then every third month you have to make a jump again. And then, when we was in New York, though, we had one guy. He shoot didn't open. He was thirty below zero. And he got hung up below the plane. And then they tried, they couldn't get him back in. They had to cut him loose with a knife, cut his strap loose, and he went down. But then his main chute opened up, and they had to go get him with an airplane. He landed out in the country someplace, I don't know where he landed. So he didn't join us. He quit the airborne after that. <laughs> he never jumped again. He went into the regular army. He wouldn't get back up in the, in the chute. He wouldn't go up in the plane anymore. But he, he froze the side of his face. He was out there three minutes in 30 below zero weather. That was in Syracuse, New York. How high do you jump from? Uh, Between 15 and 2,000 feet. Well, that's a big range. Well, that's only 500. 15 and 2,000? Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. I was thinking 15,000 feet. No, oh, no. <laughs> Now, you were telling me that you uh, you ran into quite a few uh, Oneidas when you were in. Not too many. Uh, you were down in Fort... Fort Campbell, Fort Kentucky. Campbell? Yeah, Kentucky. There was two guys I ran into. I was down there with Leander, Leander Danford and Mervyn Jordan. I met after that. I was in for a while, about six months. After I was in about six months, I met Leander. And he knew where Mervyn was. and. We used to come together once in a while on paydays. <laughs> Two and a half minutes gone. Okay. Where, uh, what were they in? Were they in the airborne too? Yes. That's on the airborne there, the base. That's Fort Campbell. Okay. okay, then so, uh, how long was your tour? Two years. Two years in the airborne, yeah. And uh, were you going to stay in, or did you? Uh, I almost, I almost did, but the wrong guy asked me. I didn't like him. The guy who asked me. What happened? He, I didn't like him. Nothing happened. I just didn't like him. My company commander. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if the first sergeant asked me or somebody else, I would have stayed in. But <laughs> my company commander, I just, I don't know. I just didn't like him. So you didn't mind it at all in the service? No, it was, I thought it was it. It was all right. 
met a lot of people. I, I, I recommend it for everybody. I think you should go in yet. Oh. <laughs> Take the basic training anyway. Well, uh, I had enough of it. <laughs> too long ago. Were you an airborne too? No, I was not Marines. Oh, straight legger. Hundred years ago. <laughs> But uh, then you finished up. What happened after you, uh, you you finished your tour? I came back and went back to work on my truck driving job. That was in Appleton? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, how much time we got? One minute. Okay. Now, did, were you uh, married before you went in or after you? Uh, after I was out, about, two, you out? about, about two years. Were you still working in Appleton when you got married? Yeah. Okay. Well, tell us about the how how that came about. Let's see. That was 1953. I got out. Okay. And I went back to work at the lumber company driving truck again. And uh, you're telling us that then you were involved in some of the activities that were going on around Oneida. Well, there wasn't much activities, but we used to roller skate quite a bit, quite a bit at uh, dance hall in Oneida, Skyler's Tavern and dance hall. And then there was another dance hall that uh, used to have some things going on there. Oh, none of that was up by Vandenberg's, by Rans Valley Ballroom they call it. And uh, they used to have Uncle Louie and his country cousin Fuzzy Hassenpepper. <laughs> They put on a little show and then they have dancing afterwards. And that wasn't too often, it was very solemn they had that. <clears throat> now when did uh, when did you beat your wife? Jeez, that was a long time ago. Before I went in service I met her. I was working in Apple and I was working as a company. We used to, I met her at roller skating. I used to I was one of the few guys they had a car, <laughs> so I, I sometimes I have tw 12 kids in my car, take them home. <laughs> You're pretty popular, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody wanted to ride home. <laughs> We'd be setting triple, <laughs> Set tri triple and double and everything else in the car. And no seat belts. And no seat belts. <laughs> <clears throat> no, uh, you met her before you went into the service. Yeah. And... Did you keep company with her after you came back? Yeah, I married her. Okay. So I kept long company with her. Ah, okay. <laughs> and what, what year was that? <clears throat> we got married in 53, I think it was, yeah, 11, yeah, 11, 14, 53. Mm -hmm. okay. <coughs> I got out in January and we got married in November. And uh, did you continue working in Africa? Yeah. Yeah, I worked there for quite a while. And where did you live at that time? In Appleton. We lived in Appleton. Okay. And uh, did, uh, did you have any children? A few. Can you give us their names? <laughs> yes, I had Vivian, Veronica, Valerie, and Vicky. Then Terry and Andy come along last. So I had quite a few. A lot of shoes to buy in those years. <laughs> every week, every week you bought a new pair of shoes. You never was done buying shoes. <clears throat> did, uh, did you did you stay down in Appleton and raise your family there? No, I stayed there for a few years. I went to Milwaukee and I stayed there. What, uh, where did you work in Milwaukee? Uh, Harvey Service Incorporated. We delivered for, hauled for Sears and Roebuck. <coughs> we delivered everything they had sold. Then we supplied the stores and all around in Wisconsin and some in Illinois. So that's where you raised your family in, uh, in Milwaukee? Yes. We, Lived in Milwaukee all the, all the while, never moved out. And while well, we lived there in Milwaukee for a while, and I moved to Heartland, but I still worked in Milwaukee, Heartland, just in the ways out of Milwaukee, about 20 miles. 
And so I drove in every day from there. But Milwaukee was my actual place I worked. <clears throat> I, know, I know one of the activities that you're, you've been involved in, and uh, how long have you been uh, doing that is uh, the uh, singing with the United Singers. Uh, give, me the, give me your history about with that. Well, how did you start and, and uh, when? I used to, when I was a kid, I used to always listen to them. I used to like to hear them singing. I'd go out to all the weeks. Whenever they had a week, I'd go out and listen to them singing. <clears throat> and then after I got married, I had to go for quite a few years. And after a while, I started again. Then they invited me to sing along with them, so I started singing with them back in Milwaukee. That was, I don't remember, I don't, the years, I don't know what it was. But then we, I was singing in Milwaukee with them, with the group in Milwaukee. Then I moved back up here and picked up with these guys out here. So I sing with them out here now, pretty, pretty, pretty regular. Not all, I can't say all, but quite a bit. Oh, about what time? Uh, what year was it about when you moved back this way? Ninety-three, I think it was. Ninety-three, I came back in ninety-three. Well, by that time, was your your family pretty well grown? Yeah, they had, <coughs> and they wouldn't leave the house, so I did. <laughs> no, <laughs> I just had to put that in. <laughs> It'll fit. <clears throat> but it was just you and your wife moved back this way then? Yes, just me and the wife came back. But then I had uh, my I had daughter and son came up before that about a year. My, I inherited my mother's house. That's what happened. Then my daughter had a chance to to get a job up here, so she came up. And my son came up. He got a job in Appleton, so he moved in with her. They stayed together for a while in the house, in the old house. So they came out here before I did. So they were back in '92. They must have been out here. And then I moved back out in '94. But by then they had their own place. They were moved out again. So I had, a, I had an open house there to go into, so, so I moved in there in 90, 90, the fall of 93, I think we came out. Were you retired then or did you continue working? No, I, I, was, I was retired, but then I started back working again in 94, I think it was, in the fall of 94. I went to work for the, for the casino. What, <coughs> what, uh, what kind of work did you do over there? Oh, all kinds of stuff. I started, they showed us how to do everything, fill the machines and make payouts. But I didn't do that very much. I just uh, was rep repairing the jam ups on the machines. And then uh, later on I switched to selling coins and I liked that better so I stayed with that. I sell and change. So I stayed with that for quite a while. I was there five years. Then the wife got sick. Well, I had a stroke first, and I, I, I was off for about, about a month, I guess, and they were going to send me back here. The wife got sick, and I had to stay home and take care of her for about a year, and then she died. So I was there. Uh, I worked for about about five years over there. How long have you been, uh, have you been retired from there now for a while? Yes, I'm retired from there. I see she's been there, gee, about four years now. Yeah, she's been dead about three years, and I took care of her for once. Of about four years, I haven't been work. I haven't worked anymore. Now I'm getting used to it. <laughs> I don't want to work anymore. <laughs> but you still travel all over, don't you? No, not all over. I got a regular route I go on. Tell me about that. I I, I know you tell stories about the, the different uh, places that you go. I had I used to, I had two sisters in Seattle. I. Me and the wife and the whole family used to go visit them once a year. And then I got a brother-in-law, and now that's in Las Vegas, I, I visit him. So we'd go and visit, make the circuit, make the circle. Now I got a brother in Yuma, too. So now I'm going there, too. I got a third place to go. <laughs> so I used to always, every summer, we'd, I'd travel that way. Then when he was in service, I'd stop. And see, when Frankie was in service, he was a career man. 
I used to, we'd found, visit him once a year too. So I traveled all my life making that trip across country. And the wife always helped me drive most of the while, she used to. But then toward the end, if she couldn't help me anymore, she couldn't drive. But we still traveled. I'd load her up in that car and get her in a wheelchair and away we'd go. She traveled t till the last, the last year. Then she didn't, we didn't go. Then I've been back on a circuit again. I've been making it, making a circuit. My kids talked me out of driving though, the first, the first year. Then I kind of missed it, so I started driving again. So I'm driving, I'm back to driving again. When's your next scheduled uh, run? Tomorrow. Tomorrow? <laughs> we got you just in time then. Yeah. Oh. Where, where are you headed? Seattle. I'll be, heading, I'll be heading to Seattle, I'll get there. I figure I'll be there Saturday, and then I'll stay there two, two, two weekends. I'll go to church two days, you know, two weekends there. Then I'll go down to Vegas, and I'll stay there for a week, and I'll, then I'll go down to Yuma and stay there for a week. It takes about two days, roughly two days from Seattle to, to Las Vegas. And then about, it's only six hours from, uh, to Yuma from there. From Las Vegas. Yeah, to Yuma. But how long does it take you to come back from uh, Yuma? You just take a three time, days. right? Three days. Three days. Yeah. It gets it gets to be a quite long drive. Have you involved in any other uh, besides singing with the singers, or any other hobbies that you have that? Uh, no. That no. you uh, you work on. No, I don't want to eat. Hobby I got is eating. <laughs> I watch television. I watch television and go out. I go out to eat seven days a week. <laughs> no, sometimes on Saturday I'll miss. Saturday and Sunday I'll miss once in a while to make myself something to eat at home. I got stuff at home, but I just don't like to eat all alone. So I go out to eat just to hear other people. <laughs> but I, I stay home most of the while by myself and then. Just to go out and eat and watch television. I try to outstare it, but I never win. <laughs> it always beats me. It puts me to sleep. <laughs> how, many, uh, how many grandchildren do you have? Let's see. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, and, and uh, two great. <clears throat> now, over the years, uh, you know, you you've grew up here in Oneida, and you've been away and then returned. You've seen a lot of a lot of things uh, come and gone. Seen a lot of changes here in the community. Uh, how, how do you feel about that? What do you, what's your uh, what's your observation of that? Well. I don't know, it's, uh, you don't have to be very gone very long. People change are changing all the time. When I was in service, I knew a lot of people, so many people around here. I was gone two years, and came back, and I didn't know hardly anybody anymore. And all the, my my whole gang broke up. And they were all got, they got married and moved away and stuff. So by the time I came back, there's nobody around anymore that you know. And now I was gone for 35 years, I was gone working in Milwaukee and I came back to Oneida here and people know me that I don't even know. I go to I go to the powwows and somebody waits on me and I, I order something and they come back and say, Here you are Harry. They call me by name, I don't know who I got no idea who it is. <laughs> it's very strange those kids that was they were little kids before and they know you and they change so much that you don't know who they are. I guess that happens to me all the time. People talk to me, call me by name. <laughs> I don't know who they are at all. What kind of recommendations would you give the youth of today? Well, what I what I what I think uh, is they should study more of the Bible. I think that's the big thing right there. Learn the Ten Commandments. That's that's the only thing I could say. 
because people don't people do not know the Bible that well nowadays, and I think that I think it have it would have a big influence on them if they knew it better. They wouldn't get in so much trouble, I don't think. And I I think the reason that is that I learned the, when I went to the Seventh Day Advent School, I, I we had one hour of uh, Bible class each day, so I learned quite a bit of it. And now I get sometimes I have those. Uh, People come to the house talk to studying Bible or that. And I remember different things that they bring up because it's back in the back of my mind someplace and it refreshes it. Sorry. So I'm not. I know what they're talking about most of the while. Very very few things you know that, that they talk about that I I didn't hear about uh, you know years ago. So that's the biggest thing I could say is just go to go to school and go to. Bible, Bible, study the Bible more. Sunday school and study the Bible. Good. Anything I forgot to ask you? No, you ask me too many things. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to thank you for uh, sharing this with us. We appreciate it very much.